Welcome to the Social University Podcast. We are so glad you're joining us today because we want to help business owners, entrepreneurs, and people just like you who want to build their business online. Listen, if we can do it, you can do it. So let's go. Today, we are going to talk about Instagram and what a just a grab bag of different information is all over the internet pertaining to Instagram. So first and foremost, I want to start with what Instagram recommends for themselves. And then we're going to talk about what's ideal and what's realistic, because I, these are, hold hold on, hold on. Um, Instagram thinks that um, stories should be done every day, that they should be posted multiple times a day. They recommend uh, two in the morning, two in the afternoon, two in the evening stories. Reels, they want you to post three to five reels per week to help capitalize on Instagram's algorithm favoring your content. Photos, they want you to post regular photos at least four times a week, um, consistently with visual, uh, creating consistent visual and brand experience. But they also want you to post one to two carousels weekly that can enhance engagement as well. They also recommend that you go live bi weekly or monthly that can significantly boost real-time interaction. Okay, that is six posts for stories, one reg- six images, six graphics for sto- six stories, at least one photo. If you do a carousel, that's three. So let's say three. So now we're up to nine a day and then a reel on top of that. That's 10. 10 times five, that's 50 pieces of content. And they, they're saying so anywhere between three to six days a week. It's a lot. It's overwhelmingly a lot. So um, I, of course, we've been doing this a long time. I want to talk to you about my my group's experience, but I also want to talk to you about what else is online because when I tell you there is conflicting information, there is tremendous conflicting information, uh, and we're talking about from major resources for social media everywhere online. You have experts that are saying one thing. You have Instagram, which recommends something. Um, I I watched, I don't know how many interviews with Adam Mazzari and he, there's a lot of, I mean, even from him, there's different information. Come on, make, make up your mind. Um, we consider HubSpot, Hootsuite, later uh, Sprout Social. These are authority, social media examiner, and there's not a whole lot of agreement there either. So today we're going to talk about what we recommend personally, and we're going to talk about um, ideal versus realistic. So first and foremost, you have to have a clear objective so that you can identify your audience to make sure you're on the right platform. If you are trying to sell to people who are 75, Instagram may not be it for you. I'm just saying. But if you're a wedding vendor and you're not on Instagram, you're probably missing a huge opportunity. So you have to make sure that your audience is identified so that you can know for sure that you're on the right platform. That's how that works. The second thing you want to do is check your analytics. If you're already posting on Instagram, let's take a look at who your audience is. Let's take a look at your um, content that's doing well and your content that's doing not so well, because it will help you figure out what to do in the future. You want to make sure to complete your bio. And a complete bio is not just your company name. It includes a short concise, descriptive, keyword rich language that tells people what you do. And it it can't be this out of the box, um, next generation, cutting edge, that could be anything to anybody. It needs to be specific. I need to be able to look at that keyword, that, that description, that one liner and understand what you do immediately. And it needs to be searchable because if it's not searchable, it's worthless. Um, You also want to make sure to include your best URL. We use Linktree. There are Lincoln Bio is something else that we use. I do like Lincoln Bio because it allows you to connect a link to each individual image. Um, and that being said, you also have a landing page that you can go to. So you want to make sure um, if we use a landing page that's specifically on our site. So we want to make sure that whatever URL you're using gives you the biggest bang for your buck. Okay, number four. Let's, let's talk about hashtags. You have to be using the right hashtags. Ideally, you want to research those hashtags like once a quarter, but no less than once every six months. It is imperative that you check them all, every one, because people will squat on hashtags. They will use it for 
um, less than moral or ethical reasons. And you want to make sure that your company's not affiliated with that. We have, wow, the adult film industry has some really interesting hashtags and you don't want to accidentally post something like that on your business page because you didn't take the time to check it out. You also don't want to use these vague, broad terms that don't mean anything. Uh, If you are a dating coach and you use the word love, it's going to take you nowhere. It probably has over 10 million different tags. You won't show up at all. And it probably indicates a totally different topic than what you're actually talking about. So you have to make sure that you have the right hashtags. Again, there is so much variation online. One one, um, uh, social media specialist will say three, one will say 30. Very different. Instagram says you need three. However, research shows that using multiple uh, hashtags get you seen better, get you better engagement and more click throughs. We have come to uh, between five and 15 for clients because that's what works. That's what we've um, tested. That's what works for us. Three is not enough. You can't even get a good branded hashtag, a broad hashtag about your industry, and then a specific hashtag about you. It's got to be more than three. I mean, it's just, it's just not enough. Um, 30 is too much. So somewhere in between there, 11, 12 seems to be the sweet spot, but you have to do what works for you. Another age old debate is caption versus comments. Are you putting your hashtags in the captions or the comments? And this changes a lot. Shockingly, again, Instagram can't really make up their mind about what they want to do. They are now saying that either one is just as searchable, but six months ago it had to be in the caption or it didn't count. So I, I'm i just telling you. <laughs> also, as a um, as someone who wants engagement on their profile, on their, especially your business profile or your business page, if you put your captions as a comment, sometimes they can get buried. If other people comment, I'm always going to vote hashtags and captions just because it, it keeps them separated and it makes it easier to track and locate. That's just our experience. Again, um, there's been a lot of back and forth about what works and what doesn't work. The last official word from them is either way works fine, but Come on, come on. Um, A couple of good resources to look for hashtags. First and foremost, check Instagram itself to make sure that you're using the right hashtags and you can see how many different people are using those hashtags and those uh, keywords. You also want to check with something like right tag or something like hashtagify. We we do use those for our own research. Hashtagify shows um, suggestions and popularity. So it'll give you ideas and then tell you how many people are actually clicking on it. It's one of the more advanced Instagram hashtag tracking tools. It allows you to find the best hashtags to help your audience. And it will also give you custom suggestions based on um, usage and research volume. Right tag is uh, also something we use. I probably use right tag more. It's free. Uh, if you pay for it, it's something like $4 a month and it allows you to research how many people are seeing it. Something else that you can use is Metricool. It is also a great platform. You just have to kind of go with what works for you, but hashtagify and right tag is R I T E. And then I would say Metricool is probably the third one on top of the actual platform itself. So check your hashtags. Number five, you want to post consistently. And that is different things to different people. Again, Ooh, um, Instagram thinks consistently means daily, three to four stories a day, three, four. It, it's a, so much. It's so much. So what really works? Well, what we've discovered for our clients is, and the recommendation changes based on if you're a nano influencer or a micro influencer. Hey, media, how are you doing? I haven't seen media in a minute. It's nice to see you. Um, it also has uh, the... You don't have to be all things to all people. Okay, so what does that mean? It doesn't mean you have to post a story, a real go live, and a carousel all in the same day. For someone who generates content, it can be exhausting. So I would say your posts, three to five weekly, consistently, stories, three to five weekly, and reels, two to four weekly. Now, reels are going to give you your best engagement, but you also have to keep them simple and hook them fast. If you ramble on at the beginning of a reel, people are not going to watch it. You need to get to the point. So if you integrate those things together, it may look like three posts, two 
or let's say three stories and two reels. And that way you're getting consistent content daily without being overwhelmed by content generation. So you do want to do what works for you. And one of the best ways to find that out is to test it and see how it goes. So definitely, definitely you want to check and see what works for you. You also want to research trends. Uh, Instagram isn't really your trend star starter. TikTok is your trend starter. So if you want to find out what's going to be unpopular on Instagram next week or next month, you start on TikTok. But research trends because sounds and specific wording or voiceovers can very much work in your favor if you are trying to gain followers and engagement. Okay, now let's talk about captions. Captions are between... I mean, Instagram is a little different. You can have up to 2,200 characters. That's basically a blog post. That's an article. I think that's a lot. My attention span will not tolerate something like that. I'm not going to read that ever, ever. Doesn't matter how good the content is. It's too much. We have found that some of the best captions for engagement have up to 150 characters. Uh, over 100. So you're looking at two to six sentences. You don't want it to be so in depth that people blow by it, but you also want to have enough information so that your keywords are viable and people will take a look. Now, there are creators, there are influencers who will always use 2200. That works for them. That's great. But I'm talking about overall industry wide. This is just what we have found to be effective. Um, number eight, you also want to use interactive elements and stories when you can and keep the good ones. So if you have some great stories, they take forever. A really good story can take you 30 minutes to create. No, you know, no kidding. So you want to keep those as a highlight so that people can go back and look at those excellent stories. It also allows you to repost them later, six months, a year. If it was good once, it'll be good again. And stories are a lot like tweets. It's just like a roll of the dice is who's going to see it at the time that it's posted. So you want to make sure and keep that stuff so that you can use it again. If you can include a link in your story, include a link in your story. If you can include a call to action, do that. A question, a poll, a sticker, anything to garner engagement is it's just a great way to go for your stories. Posting at optimal times. And again, I, I cannot say how many different authorities cannot agree on this. Optimal means different for different people. And the best way for us to find out what optimal means is to post for you and figure it out. There are folks that post at 6 a.m. There are folks that post at, at 9 p.m. What works? Statistically, we are finding late afternoon, early evening is some of the best times. But the only way to find out if that works for you is to test it. Let's see if it works for you. Let's take a look at your um, your different times that are posting. Let's test it for 30 days and see how effective it is. You also want to test different content. Do your static posts do better than your reels? Okay, focus more on that. Are your stories getting better engagement than your carousels? Focus on that. You want to test not only the different content, but your different content categories. People may really respond to behind the scenes. And statistically, you are 42% more likely. Uh, it, any kind of post with a face on it, your face, team's face will get 42% higher engagement than just a plain old post. That's just the way it is. So you want to make sure to use you know, use content with people whenever you can, because that just seems to test really high. But you have to test to figure out what works for you and your company the best. I would encourage you to use user generated content. It's one of the best, most authentic ways for you to promote your brand by using third party endorsement. If other people like it, someone else will listen to them. It sounds, I mean, it sounds so simple, but so many brands will not use user-generated content, and it really, really works. You also want to leverage your pinned content. The three pins at the top of your grid carry the most weight. Use them wisely. I would say that's where you're going to put promotional or um, engaging call to actions <clears throat> or a call for the sale. You're going to use those right there so that it's easy for people to take action if they want to take action after they've seen something else. And then, of course, the last one, um, number 13, engage your community. You can't just post and ghost. You have to get out there and comment on different posts. You have to respond to your own comments. You need to respond to your own DMs, but you got to get out there and get active because building your community is really key for long-term success. 
And that is it. Next week, we are going to have a special bonus edition. Becky, our team member, Becky, our sparkly unicorn, is going to be doing the live next week. And it's a dealer's choice. So she is going to pick her topic. We will announce that probably Monday of next week so that uh, you guys have time to decide about participating. I would highly recommend it. Becky's a delight. So um, hopefully we will be seeing you next week. And until then, I'm Karen Taradis with Social U, and I'm here to help. Thanks. Thanks for joining us for the Social University podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to follow us on all of our social media at Stay Social U. That's the letter U. And we will talk to you next week. Remember, you've got this.